Hilda's request update is incoming. It's currently live on the PTB for Valheim and we've got a slew of new mini bosses. I've already shown you how to take on Brenner and I'm gonna be showing you how to take on this guy today. I am about to murder its name, apologies. Gerhafa, let me know how you pronounce it in the comment section down below. But this is the brand new cultist mini boss, a huge beast that lurks in specific caverns and I'm going to talk you through everything you need to know today about its weaknesses and strengths as we test it out in my arena and give you top tips. Based off the PTB, so remember this isn't live for everyone unless you're on the Xbox Insider program or you've chose the betas, I'm expecting it to go live in the next week or two. As usual, everything's subject to change. So by now you've worked out, you can find Hilda, I'm sure, in the meadow biome and then she'll give you the location of all of the different mini bosses. Howling Caverns does look like just a regular cavern as well, but of course you will get that warning from Hugin before you go inside telling you that this is a bit more dangerous and higher level. Expect to encounter anything from between 10 to maybe 20 old in here, all one star. I've also found it's not guaranteed that there will be a mini boss. On one of the caverns that I explored, we could not find the mini boss anywhere. It was only on this second one that we went and found. I've seen a few reports already stating that they've found some of the brand new mini boss in just any cavern. So not this particular howling cavern, but any cavern. I think that will be corrected and fixed in future. So as said, there's plenty of Ulv in here and they shouldn't be too much of an issue with the usual kind of stuff that you would take them on with. They're resistant to pretty much fire, but they're weak against poison. Now that changes when it comes to actually facing off against the mini boss himself. Obviously clearly you can see he's gonna be doing a lot of frost damage. Rough calculation of its health, it's probably got around 3,200 or more. A significant amount more than obviously just a regular cultist. Now the Fenris armor is good for against obviously fire, makes you almost immune, but I figured it'd still be good for facing against this guy, as obviously it does keep you protected against frost and cold. Gehafa's formidable attacks though really come from the ice blast there, and actually it's big chlorine attacks. So wearing this armor here, you can see it's gonna do 16 damage with this radius effect each time. The large jet of frost it will fire in front of it does around 19 to maybe 30 frost each time and that pops up four times within that and then each one of these strikes is like 32 to 40 hits as well. A little comparison obviously using cheats and stuff to show you what it's like naked 45 with that ground effect and then yeah 43 with the frost in front. A huge jump, that's why I say it's the most dangerous there with these actual claw attacks, 90 damage some of them. So yes, flame damage is going to do a good amount. You can see the yellow numbers really popping up, that means it's weak against it. And then at least 5 ticks there for 10 damage with the burning effect. Obviously you can take it on much sooner though and I would recommend using either poison weapons or range to keep distance away or definitely an Atka. But we'll come to that in a second. But pretty much with one good full swing that hits him, you're going to get at least 80 fire damage with a regular decent character and obviously more if you've leveled it up. 30 or so for the initial hit and then 10 or so afterwards, so maybe up to like 90. So obviously there isn't actually a burn effect with the frost damage that it does to you, instead it is all just about slowing you down and then obviously getting even more hits in. You can pretty much easily run away from the big stream, but the ground pound is a bit more difficult to avoid. It will knock him back, so obviously you'll keep him away, but the actual area effects damage will still hit from where it first originally was gonna land. So you still gotta be a bit careful about how you utilize it using the special attack on Atgars. So fire's good. I'll show you the fire arrows a bit later as well, but you're actually still better off using something like poison. You get what 40 to 45 with the initial hit and then maybe five to six with each tick afterwards for five or six ticks so you're looking around 60 to 65 damage maybe obviously using the draugr fang and poison arrows jotun's bane could also be pretty decent as you can see getting anything between 30 and 40 maybe damage with each swing and getting anything between sort of four and maybe even six poison damage per tick also but you can't just be a good fashioned black metal sword doing huge amounts there, 75 per swing with the third one in the combo over 180. 
The point I'm getting at here is that you could use pretty much any kind of weapon set that you're going to feel comfortable with, and that's obviously doing high damage. If you can't be using some of these tools and weapons, you're not simply ready to take it on. If you've got to a cavern and you're feeling pretty good about having explored some of them, it's such a jump up with this mini boss having so much more health, 3,200 or whatever. So it really is about coming here with more decent weapons and definitely upgraded gear. The Lightning Agar obviously does a huge amount of damage, massive big swings there, 112 per hit. But that crucial bit about knocking it away, I think it's going to be pretty important, especially when you're in the close sort of quarters of the caverns. I'm not a huge fan of axes as I find them too slow to swing, but here the crystal wax does do the spirit damage they're burning as well. Albert for quite low amounts compared to what we've seen with poison or fire. Silver sword doing damage upwards of 60, and then obviously you've got the burning damage as well, anywhere from 4 up to like 9. Combination of the spine snap bow with fire arrows it does pretty good amounts as well. So obviously you've got two different ticks happening there, the fire damage and the spirit damage. Although one is significantly worse than the other, which I'm attributing to the actual spirit. And just showing off another combination with the Draugrafang and fire arrows. Obviously not doing as much damage, only around 30, so upwards of 30. And then obviously the burn damage there between 4.5 and 1.2 upwards. But a early attempt at taking him on, rather than getting good or better weapons, then it's something more viable. As always, take some of that testing with a pinch of salt, it may get changed, and it's not going to make up for trying to kid it inside the actual arena or dungeon. Of course, once you do, you get another chest, 200 weights, so you're going to have to make sure you can actually carry it far, and you can't take it through teleportals. But the silver chest will open up a huge amount more recipes to take back to Hilda. You gain access to the shawl style dresses and more of the cape tunics. Not to mention the extravagant cap as well. And a few more simple hats. So for now conclusion, poison, silver or fire weapons are all going to do really good. But if you can get just a black metal weapon instead, like an atgo or a sword, then you're going to be pretty much good enough with just that. Sure, some triad's going to beat it with just its fists. Good luck with that. Whittling away 3,200 health inside this environment. I would say you probably need to do it in waves. Go and kill all the old, get rid of all the resources that are in there. There's plenty of fangs and obviously fur. And then come back and take on this guy. And it goes without saying that frost potions are obviously going to be something that you should encounter or use. As it should reduce the amount of slowness that you get from some of these attacks. Trophy itself is good, nice size. I like the fact it's got the shawl on it as well, looking a bit different from the cultists. And there you go. That's everything we know so far about this new mini boss. I'll be back with more comprehensive videos once this update goes live for everyone. But as I said, it's currently only available on the PTB. Until next time, Ratbags, I'll catch you later.